Sandbaggers Case Files, a look back at the best spy show you've never heard of. Buckle yourselves in, because the Sandbaggers Season 1 finale, Special Relationship, is one hell of a roller coaster ride. An East Berliner by the name of Mittag, who supplies information to the SIS, has absconded from his job with photos of a new Soviet missile complex that the British are keen to learn about. The problem is, Mittag is convinced he is under suspicion, so he wants someone to come in and get the photos from him. Burnside needs to send someone in who can pass for an East Berliner, but whom the authorities won't recognize. He proposes to send the number two man from their bond station, Bob Clemens, an East Berlin specialist. However, as usual with the best laid plans of mice and sandbaggers, things quickly go haywire. It seems Clemens got himself into a car accident on the way to the airport and broke his leg. There's no way he can get into East Berlin to carry out the mission. And due to budget cuts, there's no one else available. Except, Burnside suddenly realizes, for one person. She's a special agent, Willie. Berlin orientated. She should have been the first choice even before Clemens. Yeah, if we thought about it. Sandbaggers aren't usually fully trained linguists, are they? Well, we thought about it now. Laura, you're on your bike. Berlin. Immediate briefing. I'll see you in the ops room. Laura Dickens takes the new assignment in stride, but for Burnside, the decision to send this particular sandbagger into harm's way is more difficult than usual. That's because recently, the relationship between him and Laura has blossomed into romance. For the first time in years, Burnside is actually happy, and it's all thanks to Laura. Reluctantly, Burnside agrees to let Laura go into East Berlin to get the photos. But within hours of her arrival, the mission begins to fall apart. Mittag was searched as he left work, which means he was under suspicion after all. Will the East German authorities get to Mittag's flat before Laura can make her escape? After a tense wait, the ops room gets the news. Laura has been arrested. Burnside wants to move fast and offer to swap her for someone the East Germans want back. The reasons aren't entirely personal. Prior to the mission, Laura had been extensively briefed on the Hungarian underground network. When, not if, she breaks under interrogation, she could divulge information that could unravel 20-plus years of careful intelligence work and cost the lives of dozens of Hungarian agents. Then, finally, some good news. The French Secret Service has a Soviet agent named Daryabin who could be traded. Plus, Burnside knows the current head of the French agency, André Baumel, and he's hopeful he might be able to talk him into doing a deal with SIS. Burnside flies to Paris the next day to negotiate for the exchange. But Baumel knows he has Burnside over a barrel, and it's time to cash in. I want... All special relationship material for one year from the day you exchanged Ariabi. With no alternative, Burnside agrees to Baumel's terms. Baumel insists on having the agreement in writing, signed by Sir James Greenlee, the head of SIS, and Sir Geoffrey Wellingham of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Humiliated, Burnside must return to London and convince both men to risk almost certain disgrace by signing the agreement. It's the price that must be paid to protect the Hungarian underground and the special relationship with the CIA. Burnside has one last card to play, however. He shows the signed agreement not only to Kane, but also to Jeff Ross. Who's got the original? I have. And I'm giving it to Bermel this evening in Berlin. Are you out of your mind? I rather think I must be. Neil, do you know... It's wrong. The exchange is set for 11 p.m. at an East Berlin border crossing. After Burnside hands over the document to Baumel in their hotel room, he and Kane join Jeff Ross at the checkpoint. The handover appears to go smoothly until...
Back at the hotel, Burnside tells Baumel to piss off. The prisoner swap did not take place, thus the deal is null and void. Baumel threatens to go to the Americans, but Burnside tells him he's already told Jeff Ross about the deal. His bluff thoroughly called, Baumel retreats with his tail between his legs, which leaves an opening for Kane to have a go at Burnside next. Burnside confesses all. Turns out he had arranged with Jeff Ross to get an agent into East Germany to shoot Laura from the eastern side of the border. Burnside couldn't let the East Germans interrogate her, but he couldn't risk destroying the special relationship with the CIA, and, I'd like to think, also the careers and reputations of Sir James and Sir Geoffrey. He was backed into a corner, and the only way out was through Laura's death. Kane storms out, threatening to quit, but Burnside knows that he, like Burnside, has nowhere else to go. Just, wow. In the season two premiere, the new Sandbagger 2 goes behind the Iron Curtain on a dangerous mission to retrieve sensitive information that... (sighs) That's next time on the Sandbagger's Case Files.